Properties of Real Numbers Part 2. In the first video, we covered commutative, associative, and distributive. And in this video, we're covering the identity and the inverse property. Two more properties left to go. The first one is the identity property. And the identity property is when we perform a mathematical operation to a specific number and we get that exact same number as a result. Now we have an identity property of both addition and multiplication, but it works the exact same way. I need to perform that math operation to x and work it out so I get the exact same number as a result, meaning x. So in addition, x plus what is going to come up to be x? Now, I've written this in two different ways because it applies with the commutative property that we saw first. It doesn't matter which order we add these two numbers in. So what plus x gives you x. Now, hopefully you already have this number in mind. If not, I suggest you pause the video and do some thinking about it. And, of course, the answer to this is 0. x plus 0 gives me x and 0 plus x gives me x. So this means that 0 is the identity in our addition operation. Same thing with multiplication. x multiplied by something also needs to come out to be x. And again, it doesn't matter x times that number or that number times x will work out to be the same way. So if you don't already have this number in mind, pause the video and see if you can come up with it. So the answer to this is 1. x times 1 gives you x, and 1 times x gives you x. So 1 times any number will always give you that same number. So this means that 1 is the identity property of multiplication. Now you won't have any homework over this, but this feeds into our next property. And that's our last property, which is the inverse property. It says, when you perform a mathematical operation to a number and get the identity as the result. So basically, I want my numbers to cancel out, leaving me with my identity. And I want to remind you what we just saw. The additive identity is 0, and the multiplicative identity is 1. So when I work through my inverse property of addition, I need to figure out x plus what works out to give me my additive identity. And again, order does not matter because we've already seen the commutative property. So if you don't have an answer to this here, pause the video and see if you can come up with it. The official answer to this is the x, but the opposite sign of it. So x plus a negative x will cancel each other out and give you zero. So the inverse property of addition is the opposite sign of the number that you're trying to cancel out. So if it was positive in this case, we'd add a negative x. If it was a negative, we'd add a positive x. Moving on to the inverse property of multiplication. x times what is going to give me 1? And again, order doesn't matter because we know multiplication is commutative. So if you don't already have this number in mind, pause the video and see if you can come up with it. So the way that I can get things to cancel out when I'm multiplying is I multiply by the reciprocal of them. So I need to multiply x times 1 over x because x in the numerator and x in the denominator will cancel out. So if I rewrite this in one full statement, x times 1 over x, and I make the first one over 1, then of course that I can see that this x in the numerator and that x in the denominator cancel out, leaving me with 1. So the inverse property of multiplication is the reciprocal of the number in the first place. And reciprocal means flipped over fraction if you need to review that vocabulary word. You will have some homework over the inverse properties, and they will look like this. Our example down here at the bottom. We need to come up with the additive inverse, and we need to come up with the multiplicative inverse. I have two examples here. I suggest you pause the video and see if you can come up with the answers to both parts A and B on both of these examples. 
On example one, first A, I need to come up with the additive inverse, meaning I need to add nine to something to come up with zero. And the number that we add it to is the opposite sign. So the answer to A in example one is negative nine. In part B, we need to come up with the multiplicative inverse. Well, it's just the reciprocal of the number. So I take nine and I flip it over. So that gives me one over nine. And this works out because nine divided by nine cancels out and that gives me my multiplicative identity, which is one. Now over here to example two, which might even seem like it's a trick question, and it kind of is. So part A, what's the additive inverse? Well, it's just zero. Zero plus self gives me zero. In part B, the multiplicative inverse, we need to take the reciprocal of zero. Well, that is one over zero. And the reason that I put this example in here is because to point out, you actually can't ever divide by zero. You should never, ever, ever have zero in the denominator of a fraction. And if you try and put this in your calculator, well, calculator will spit out an error because your calculator is trying to tell you that this is impossible to do. So if you ever try and divide by zero, the more descriptive answer is undefined, meaning it's impossible to calculate. And so the correct answer to part B is undefined. There is actually no multiplicative inverse for zero. Does it make any sense? So I've put all the properties here at the end, and we'll review them very quick like. Commutative says you can rearrange the order of two numbers when you're adding them or multiplying them. Associative says if you're adding or multiplying three different numbers, you can add them in whatever order you want and it'd be okay. Distributive says you can distribute a number through the parentheses feed the dog and feed the cat. Identity says you can add or multiply something by a number and get that exact same number you started out with. And of course, the additive identity is zero and the multiplicative identity is one. And then the inverse property is basically you trying to do the opposite operation. What's going to cancel those numbers out in the first place? So the additive one is the opposite sign. The multiplicative one is the opposite fraction or the reciprocal of the fraction. And we have officially covered all the properties of real numbers.